Affinity version 2.3 has just been released, and in this video, I'll show you the biggest changes that you should know about. Let's get started. The biggest change in version 2.3 is the new Spiral tool. This tool can be found alongside all of the other shape tools. Using this tool, we can click and drag to make a spiral. And just like the other shape tools, there are a lot of options that we can change in the context toolbar. These options are pretty easy to figure out, so I think you'll have a lot of fun customizing your spirals. The next biggest change is to the Move and Duplicate dialog box. To use this feature, have any object selected with the Move tool, and then press the Return key on your keyboard. This dialog box was introduced in version 2.2, but now, in version 2.3, the Scale option has been added. In this example, I have a group selected that has 12 circles inside of it. I'm going to duplicate this group 18 times, and then make each group 75% the size of the previous group. And just for fun, I'm going to rotate each duplicate by 15 degrees. Then I can confirm my changes. This is just one example of what you can do with the Move and Duplicate feature, so play around with it and have fun! The next update is very minor, but it's still nice to have. We can now change the background color of the Assets panel. To do this, open the Assets panel Settings, and then come over to Background. From here, we can change the background color to Light, Dark, or checkerboard. Depending on the assets you have, this new addition can help you to see them better. Another little update is the new pixel grid. To see the pixel grid, just zoom into your document. Once you're zoomed in far enough, the pixel grid will automatically appear. And by combining the pixel grid with the pixel tool, we can easily change the color of individual pixels. This isn't something you normally need to do, but it can be useful in certain situations, like when making pixel art. And finally, version 2.3 gives us a new option when exporting our document. If we change the export file type to PDF, and then come down to the bottom of the advanced section, we can now require a password to be entered for anyone to open the exported PDF. Just don't use 123456 as your password, because that's the most common password in the world. <laughs> so those are my favorite changes in Affinity 2.3. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited about, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.